Well, this is going to be a fun video. Uh, my wife's just brought my uh, favourite wine gums, and I think I'm going to be eating them. Um, on Friday, we had a delivery of PCBs. Um, we'd been waiting for, in particular, servo controllers that had gone on to back order. So we were able to make um, 100, get them out the door, and fulfil all the back orders on Friday. And today, um, I'm just carrying on, making sure we've got some more. I've just made a couple of batches. A batch is 25, so I do a brick. 25 blanks. Here's a blank board. You'll see them in a minute. I'll show them one. So here's a blank before it's made. And I make them in 25s. And that way, I have a nice little batch that I can fully check before moving on to the next one. So, uh, I thought this time, rather than just jumping in and go, look, I'm making boards, I'll show you how we set up for it. First of all, on the pick and place machine, let's get the compressor on. This is a tray for components off it. And in the case of the microcontrollers, they come in trays of 250. So there would have been 250 on here. And I buy them in um, four trays at a time, so that's a thousand at a time. And there's another thousand on the way. We'll probably get this used off in the next couple of days and then um, wait for the new ones. So because our pick and place machine isn't big enough, um, I can't fit the, the tray of micro microcontrollers onto the pick and place machine. I have to put them onto this uh, component tray here. So this just happens to take 25, which is our batch size. So I'll put 25 of these on. As long as I get them the right way up, everything will be fine. Because the vision system on the pick and place can't tell if they're the wrong way around because they're uh, symmetrical. Tedious as this may be, I've done thousands and thousands. Five left. And that's how the tray gets loaded. Next thing, put these away, so nothing bad happens. Into the anti-static bag and back on the shelf. And while I'm doing that, let's have another wine gum. At the bottom of the tray, uh, I'll load the voltage regulators. sure everything's happy there. Now this will take 16 across because the uh, the slot they're in is bigger than the MCU. So I'll put some additional ones at the bottom of the pick and place machine. Damn, these wine gums are good. They're not your average wine gums, they're uh, really quite special or nice. I think they're perfumed. Sheila gets them from the local farm shop. I've still got a dodgy voice. I think it's that time of year where it's it's been cold outside, but not that cold, yet we've had the central heating on all the time as well. Four. one that should do these can go away back in here oops keep them on the anti-static bag and what you'll see with the servo controller is despite having a pick and place machine 
There's still a load of manual work involved. One day, I dream of being able to press a button and having them fall out, but that's not today. Put these on here. I've never, uh, I've never popped one like this with static, but I am holding the base now. I seem to just do that intuitively. Well, maybe on this video I will. Okay, so the next phase is before we get that going, I'll get some components ready. So I've cut the reels of components into 25s. So there's a 330 microfarad capacitor. And I've got a large coil, and I want the larger 680 microfarad capacitor as well. So there's two capacitors and a coil that I place manually. Hopefully you can see that. Yes, you can. Um, so let's get these the right way up. These components go on by hand after the circuit board's been through the pick and place machine because um, the capacitors are too tall for the machine to pick. I guess I got the poverty model and the coils are too heavy so it's easier just to do them by hand. If I'm working and the robot's working then maximum efficiency I hope. Today is Sunday. We work seven days a week no rest for the wicked. Mm, but I suppose if you do what you love, you don't work. Though sometimes it can be hard. I think some of the hardest things I find are uh, when I'm trying to get a mimic panel right and it's just not flowing. I can't, you know, can't get the artwork right or can't quite achieve what the customer's expecting or wants. Probably my own fault because I said yes when I should have said no. Time for a wine gum. Mmm. Okay. Right, the next part is where I'll apply the solder paste. See, lead free. Can't believe the price of this stuff. I think that tub's about 70 pounds. 500 grams half a kilo anyway good stuff forgive me while I eat Let's get the paste on there brilliant and here's the board it's got the solder paste on can you focus yep so the solder paste has been applied so if I put, put a component on there now, it'll stick like putty. Um, if I reposition the camera, so you can see the machine, the problem is you'll miss what I'm doing. So I'll fire the machine off in the back. Can you see? Yeah, you can see there. And we'll spin them both up for a bit. Compressor is on, everything's loaded. Check, 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 press go. Vision system has a look at the fiducials and fails. It doesn't like that fiducial. So what I'll do, I'll give it a little clean, wipe with a finger, and another go. There we go, needs a wipe. And whilst it's placing, and I'm eating, we'll solder up some more. Because I've just taken the solder out of the tub, it's not warm, so it's quite, quite cold, and you can't you can't drag too fast. It makes a mess. You've got to go slow. But once I've done a few boards, I could speed up. So I put them onto the wooden trays nine at a time. And into the oven, I'll put them in, in three sixes and a seven.
bit of wiggling to get seven in at a time. It just about fits though. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Yeah. Putting the buffer chips on. Some rectifier going on by that sound. Back to a diode. Yep. And now it'll come and it'll place the microcontroller. So it'll go to the tray. Pick that. Can you see it? Yeah, it's on the vision system. And now the last board is the voltage regulator, which is placing now. Just in time. Need to get another board on. I'm so sad I can tell what the machine's doing by the sound it makes and where it is. It's only chewed me up twice. There it is with all the components on. If you look, nothing's falling off. So they're held on, it's like putty. And that's, uh, that's because the paste is wet. And then I'll do some manual work on that in a few minutes and I'll let you see that. But for now, let's make the rest of these. I hope you liked last week's blog video on the, um, the Mimic panel. It's a hybrid Mimic panel. It's quite a nice panel that. It took a lot of drawing to get it right and we did a lot of twos and fro's with the customer but the customer hasn't seen it yet. So I'm just waiting for some toggle switches to arrive and then I'll ship it much earlier than it's due. Uh, the toggle switches are in this country, I'm told. Check the tracking. So that's all good. Those two buffer chips it's just placed come from a, a tube feeder, which I periodically refill. So I'll figure out how to get the camera on the pick and place machine for a few runs and you can have a look at that. That's got to be a microcontroller. And there's the voltage regulator. Magnifying glass, that oh, looks lovely that. Okay, so I'll move this tray over here. Right, let's readjust the camera. Grab another wine gum. So what I have to do is just manually check and populate the final components. The buttons, there are four. One, two, three, and four. Capacitor, capacitor, and the coil. Before anyone says, have you tried a vacuum hose? Yes, I've got one, don't like it. That's great, that's ready for the oven. Happy with that, happy with that, everything looks good. See if I can keep the machine working over there while I'm working over here, it's, I think it's as efficient as I can be. And this will take me just over an hour to make 25 of these. They won't be finished, they've got to be hand soldered, all the pins. And that's something my daughter will do tomorrow. So I'll come back with the camera. Didn't like that part. There we go. I think I rejected one. And now it's finished. There's another board. Looking good. Everything's on in the right place. Nothing out of alignment. Let's poke that diode a bit. Buttons on, 330 microfarad cap. 
680 microfarad cap. Yep! And, and there's the manager. I'll let you see a board. Grab a, bl a blank. Take the old one off, fit the new one. And there we go. Check, yep, looks good. While I'm here, the tube feeder needs some more of these buffer chips. I'll just slot them in here, and these are gravity fed. Didn't like that, whatever it's doing. Okay, let's figure it out. <coughs> so it's picking on a capacitor. Let's have another go, let's do a manual feed. Not ah, it's out of alignment, I can see that. Do you want to take your sandwich? Yes, please. Or pork chocolate noodles. Oh, I separate. Okay, turkey sandwich is fine. Looks like I'm having a turkey sandwich. So we're on part number five here, so I'm going to cancel that and just realign the head. And then I'll say come back to part number five and then we'll just carry on from there. Start mounting. Here. There we go. Better. Odd. Right, I'll keep placing components and I'll have another one again. Oh, that's so good. Last one. I make more servo controllers than any other board. It's our most popular product. I'm comfortable with up to a hundred circuit boards per week. That's nice and steady, but we've made a hundred today with this batch. Uh, I want to get ahead of the stock, not behind. And I've got some LED expansion boards coming in on another shipment on Wednesday. I'm down to one of those at the moment. So by the time this video goes out, it will all be fixed, but I need to make a ton of those as well. I need to make a ton of servo 4Rs and then probably will be on multi-panels and my daughter's least favourite the push button switches I've got to show you that on a video because it's the most tedious and time consuming and manual of all boards we make it takes a full day just to make a few thousand By putting these components on by hand, it also gives me an opportunity to inspect the board before it goes in the oven. It's easy to fix something while the solder is soft and unmelted. That's gone hard. 
that didn't work, whatever that was. Let's go and have a look at the machine again. It's keeping me busy today. Where are we on this ah, capacitor? Yes. It's a funny one that it never feeds right like capacitor. <clears throat> and after every two or three boards I have to just advance it a little bit, give it a little tug. So I've just finished the uh, first six boards in the oven and I'll take these out then I'll leave the camera on while it uh, runs the next lot through. I'll put seven in the next and what I'll do is I'll manually focus on the boards so hopefully the reflections won't uh, screw up the focus. Three in the middle Two at the top, two at the bottom. Right, bear with me while I just switch to manual focus. Okay, I think that's good. So, close the door, start the oven. If I zoom out a little bit, Move that over. You can't quite see the control head. This is the temperature here. Uh, how tight can I get this? Yeah, it's kind of there, isn't it? So you can see what's happening in the oven here. So the Galden fluid will be heated up to 230 degrees, 225, and it will surround the boards in a vapour at that temperature and that's when the soldering will occur. I think this light is shining, oh if it goes off you can't see anything. Right well we'll leave that on. I'm hoping you can see what's happening. The problem is I'm trying to film it and do it at the same time. I've lost the temperature there. So the preheat is 43 degrees at the moment and it's rising. As soon as it hits 59, dunk. And it's done. Got my special glove on. I still get burned, just not as much. 
and they only need it to take the boards out, not to put them back. One, two, I have to make sure I don't knock anything. Three, I'm pretty good at knocking a button. Four, five, six. Rinse and repeat. Okay, let's move the camera and you can see what we're up to. So I've remembered to turn autofocus back on. So here's the seven boards that came out of the oven. If it focuses on that, come on, there we go. Beautiful job. These are now ready to have the through hole components, which are the pins soldered. So these will go into this rack, it's 25 on a rack. Two at the back, one at the front. And they'll be ready for finishing tomorrow. And then we'll get on with a different board. Now we've made a couple of hundred servo controllers. So they'll sit here, my daughter will come along tomorrow and she'll hand solder them and I'll, uh, I'll show you how that uh, operates when she's here, assuming she lets me. So we finished uh, soldering the um, servo controllers. They've just come out of the bath yesterday. They've sat in the trays here and they're now being manually finished. So on these you can see we've added the pins. Let's go in and have a look. The pins have been added and the boards are now ready for, um, ready for testing and software programming. So that will happen uh, the step after this. So what I thought I'd do now is I'll leave the camera on and you can see you can see my daughter Lucy assemble a set. So these are gonna come off now and uh, the new, newly soldered boards without the pins will go on. So here's one without the pins. There we go, it's in focus. You can see there's nothing here and here. And the finish boards, and you can see here's a finish board and it has all the header pins installed here and here. So that's ready for programming and testing. So let's see how Lucy gets on with these boards. Where would you like that? There.
So we've about 50 servo controllers here. Um, the physical manufacturing is complete. We just need to put some software on the microcontroller so it'll function and finish off with testing. Now, if you've ever looked at the back of a, one of our boards with a microcontroller on it, you'll see if I hold it up to the camera. Focus, there we go. See these six little dimples here? They're so I can program it. So I have a little uh, hardware programmer here with um, some pins. And these are spring-loaded pins. And they'll press onto here and they'll allow me to, to program the board quickly. So I'm going to whiz through these 50 and uh, we'll get them sorted. I keep meaning to make a better programmer, but this one works. So refer to the first rule, which is don't fix what ain't broke. So I'll lay them out. There's 16, that'll do to start. Have to get them the right way round. I don't want to break anything at this point. So let's connect this up to my PC. And we'll uh, start programming. And what you'll see is a little window will appear here showing the state of the programming. I was on and go would help if I had the cursor on the right, right window. Let's try it again. Powers on and go. And there's the right state. So it does a right. Six seconds. Now it's reading it, verifying that it'll set the fuse bits when it's complete and you get a lock verified. And the lock is where it sets the chip state locks it and determines what the internal frequency is and so on that the code's going to run at so everything works properly. So I'll be sitting here for 50 of these. Or 50-ish. So there we have our batch of servo controllers, uh, software loaded ready to be tested. So I shall move them over to the, the test table 
and set the camera up and you can have a look there. What have we got? 10, 20, 30, 40, 42. See you in a minute. So here's the uh, dated test rig. <laughs> We've had it for ages, uh, but it works. And what we do is we can very quickly drop a servo controller on this and hook it up to a load of servos, switches, and uh, check the thing works. There's also a 4 arch, just another network device in slave mode, so I can test the network port at the same time. And the aim of the game here is just to test as much, much as we can, as quickly as we can. So what I want to do first is drop the board on, hook up the switches and servos, and then factory reset the board. That allows me to check both LEDs are working and to initialize it so it's in a known good state. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight didn't move. Is that a switch issue or a something else issue? servo lead. So it was trusty. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now when I flick a switch here I just want to hear a relay fire or a see a servo move. That tells me the network port's working and I'm good to go. The other thing I'll do is I'll quickly hit the memory and just throw a memory on and then it's proven the external buttons are working too. So I've basically run through, tested every input, every output, the memory and the network, and that one's good to be packaged. I've just got to do that for uh, 42 more boards. So board on, wired up to power, drop the servo connector on, drop the switch connector on. Factory reset the unit, connect the network, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Network works, memory works. That's a pass on to the next. The problem with using sockets on top with these, these big test rig connectors is if the pins aren't perfectly straight, then the connector doesn't fit. So at some point I'm going to redesign this test rig to use uh, the pogo pins which will connect from underneath. Maybe I'm being a bit lazy because this just works. Reset. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Memory. Yep. So I hope you enjoyed the insights of seeing um, a couple of batches of servo controllers go from beginning to end, from a bare board up to a tested product, ready to be packaged and shipped. And it's quite a bit involved. It's quite a few stages. And um, and that's that's how we make those. So uh, stay tuned to the next blog and uh, we'll try and show you a bit more. Thanks for watching.